Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 5, verses 17, all the way through to the end of the chapter, verse 42. We're talking about the apostles imprisoned and an angel of the Lord released them. Now, we just came from the last session when we were talking about how great and mighty miracles were done by the hands of the apostles. It says that even the shadow of Peter healed the sick, and many Jewish people were being added to their numbers, okay? It was an awesome time, but they had persecution. But the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, I've said this before, but in case some of you might be listening to this the first time, there are different sects, okay? The Sadducees is one, the Pharisees is another. The difference between the Sadducees and the Pharisees is this. The Sadducees believed that the Torah, the books of Moses, the books of Moshe, were the word of God. And to them, that was the only canonized word of God to them. So anything that's not found in the books of Moses is rejected. Whereas the Pharisees, they believed in the books of Moses. They believed in the prophets, the Ketavim, and many other writings, and the oral Torah itself as well. So they believed in a lot of different things. You see, in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus commanded his followers to go by the teachings of the Pharisees. Jesus told his disciples to listen to obey and to do all that the Pharisees tell them to do, which is very significant. If you know the difference between the Sadducees and the Pharisees, you know the Pharisees are accepting of a lot more different things than the Sadducees are. In fact, the Sadducees today is like the sola scriptura Christians today, okay? Where if it's not in their Bible, it's not accepted. If it's not in their narrowly defined canon, then it's not accepted. Whereas the Pharisees, they accepted a lot of other things. But Jesus didn't say, go by the Sadducees. He said, do what the Pharisees tell you to observe and do. But he added a little disclaimer in there saying, don't do what they do because they're hypocrites, but do what they say. Because they sit in Moses' seat, as Jesus said, they say the right things. They command the right things, but they don't do the right things. You know, the, what they say and what they do are totally different things. Jesus said, do what they say, but not what they do. But once again, verse 17 here says that the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy. Very malicious thing is jealousy. It was because of jealousy Cain killed Abel. Jealousy can be a very, very evil and very malicious thing. Verse 18 here says, And they laid hands on the apostles. In other words, they arrested them and put them in public custody. In other words, they put them in a public prison. And other translations actually says put them in public jail as opposed to public custody. Verse 19, But... An angel of the Lord opened the prison doors by night and brought them out and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Very, very significant here. The angel of the Lord commanded the apostles to disobey the authorities. The authorities told them, don't preach about this life. Don't preach about Jesus. Don't preach about any of this stuff. Just keep your mouth shut. Go your way and live your own life, you know, privately. But instead, the angel of the Lord commanded them to go against the authorities and to preach, although the authorities said not to preach. Verse 21, when they heard this, they entered into the temple about daybreak and taught. This is a very courageous thing. You think that they'd stay away from the temple, seeing that the temple was kind of like a hot spot of persecution. You got all these leaders there, all these authorities that, that just hated them talking about Jesus, didn't want to hear anything about it, and commanded them not to do that, okay? But they went right back to the temple. But the high priest came. You know, it's pretty serious when the high priest has to come. And those who were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. 
But the officers who came didn't find them in the prison. They returned and reported, We found the prison shut and locked, and the guards standing before the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these words, they were very perplexed about them and what might become of this. I think they should be very perplexed at that. I mean, hey, all these signs and wonders happening, yet they're still persecuting the apostles. Yet they're st it's like, it's almost like Pharaoh and Moses. It's like, you know, how can you not, you know, soften your heart? But they didn't. And one came and told them, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple standing and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they were afraid that the people might stone them. When they had brought them, they set them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, Didn't we strictly command you not to teach in this name? Behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. They were kind of feeling it at this time because they were like, hey, you are saying that we are guilty of crucifying Yeshua. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, whom you killed, hanging him on a tree. Isn't it very significant that the cross here is referred to as a tree? I spoke about this several times. The parallels between the Garden of Eden and the cross. Verse 31, God exalted him with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and remission of sins. We are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Two things here, very, very important to understand here. It says that Jesus' purpose here, again, was to bring repentance. Don't skip over that, because a lot of Christians say, well, you know what? All you got to do is believe and God will just cover over your sins. No, you need to repent of your sins. You need to change. This is what it's all about, to change your sinful ways, to turn away from your sinful, selfish ways, to turn away from your sinful, selfish lusts and pride, and to turn to God, to get rid of all the sin, to get rid of all the pride. That is repentance according to the Bible. And also it says that God gives the Holy Spirit to those who believe, just, just say that Jesus is Lord, to those who say the sinner's prayer. God gives the Holy Spirit to, to those who come forward and get the man of God or the preacher to lay hands on them. No, it's not what it says. That is not what it says. It says, God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. Obey Him. Very, very key word here. Verse 33, But they, when they heard this, were cut to the heart and were determined to kill them. But one stood up in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law. Remember, not all Pharisees are evil, okay? A lot of times the Bible talks about things in generalities, okay? The Pharisees this, the world that, m mankind this, and, you know, there's none that seek the Lord. Well, you know, it, when it says there's none that seek the Lord, it doesn't mean no one in the whole entire earth because we know that God has always had a remnant that sought him, okay? So we got to keep everything in context and know when the scriptures talk in generalities, as opposed to specificities, okay? So one stood up in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, a teacher of the Torah, honored by all the people and commanded to put the apostles out for a little while. Uh, let's have a little secret meeting here. We're going to have, like, we got we to gotta talk to the inside circle here, okay? This is going to be a private meeting. He said to them, you men of Israel, be careful concerning these men. 
what you are about to do. For before these days, Theudas rose up, making himself out to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves. He was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were dispersed and came to nothing. After this, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the enrollment and drew away some people after him. He also perished, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered abroad. Now I tell you, withdraw from these men and leave them alone. For if this counsel or this work is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow it, and you would be found even to be fighting against God. Wow, what a revelation. I mean, here is a Pharisee, a very honorable Pharisee, one of the top-notch leaders of Israel, standing up pretty much protecting the apostles. This is amazing. This is, this is absolutely astonishing. Verse 40, they agreed with him. How can you not agree with what he said? Very, very wise word. Summoning the apostles, they beat them. Why would they beat them after all this, thinking that this could be from God? They beat them. Well, maybe because, you know, they were under pressure from the people, from their, you know, from their bosses, from their authorities, you know, from the high priest, you know, just to make it look good. You know, why would we arrest somebody? Why would we, you know, call the council, the Senate, you know, the Sanhedrin and all these people? Why would we go to such great length and at least not punish them a little bit, you know, and commanded them again, not to speak in the name of Yeshua and let them go. They therefore departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for Jesus' name. Every day in the temple and at home, they never stopped teaching and preaching Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. They were not obedient to the authorities of men. They were obedient to the authority of God. This is how we should be. You should set down, lay down everything for him. Don't let the snare of men, that is the fear of men. It's a trap, okay? It's a snare. Don't let the fear of men catch you up, okay? Let the fear of God fill your heart more than the fear of men, much more than the fear of men, so that you will stay far from sin Maybe not sin in the eyes of men, but sin in the eyes of God. And as always, press into the presence of the Lord. Press into the knowledge of the Lord. Seek Him. Be thirsty for Him. Be hungry. Be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. To do and to be in that place that is right. To do the right thing and to be in that right place with God. And call upon His name and He will show you great and mighty things. I promise you. Love you guys.